Right, rule 303 here. Nice to see you all again. It's been a long time. Um, apologies for the lack of uh, lack of uploads and onto the channel. I've just been so bloody busy. It's been untrue. Uh, setting up a new business and family responsibilities, health responsibility, you know, all sorts of stuff. Life gets in the way sometimes and that's exactly what's happened over the last six months, I suppose, really. Um, but what it's really nice to see is that we're still getting a trickle of new followers. Uh, we're not aiming to be a mega, mega huge channel. That's never going to happen, um, I don't think. However, we are still seeing people joining and offering comments and getting involved. And that's really great to see. So thanks very much for all the new subscribers and the comments that you're offering. Um, in terms of today's video, what I wanted to talk about really was, I suppose, specific in a way to the UK and the UK gun um, gun scene, uh, shooting scene. Um, however, I don't think it's specifically, completely exclusively uh, the UK that this applies to. I think it probably could apply to the States. It could apply to anywhere. Um, because really the content of this little video is around, I suppose, a philosophy of starting shooting. Um, and I, I think it's relevant and I think we always need to get as much new blood into the shooting sports as possible. Um, we need to keep it alive in terms of getting people interested and keeping it accessible. Something that we're pretty woeful at doing in the UK. Um, but, you know, I think that really does need to change. We need to push forward and, and really make sure that shooting sports of all descriptions uh, survive for future generations, um, which... As, as, as we're heading at the moment, I don't feel that we're filling the shoes of the old boys and girls that are dying off, sadly, slowly. Um, we need young blood. Uh, we've got a very, very capable and active competitive shooting scene at a high level in the UK, uh, particularly around things like clays and uh, rimfire competitions and so on. Um, and, you know, that stuff's great, but actually on a club level, we need to see hundreds we need to see thousands we need to see big big numbers in order to be able to keep the shooting sports alive in the uk and i guess that applies everywhere really doesn't it you know we've got it we've got to make sure that we're getting new interest and throughput and new people into sports and activities that we love so much before they uh, eventually nosedive into obscurity and of course it's also a lot easier to legislate against things that aren't popular so um, whatever your views are on firearms legislation and so on and so forth um, really people vote with their feet don't they and and you know if we've got more shooters incorporated in wholesome sporting shooting activities then you know it just makes it that bit more difficult doesn't it to uh, be pushing through uh, punitive legislations so there's a thought for you too Okay, so what I wanted to talk about in detail today is around accessing the shooting sports on a budget. So let's assume that you are really interested in taking up shooting you or you want to have a go uh, and you've had a go and you kind of think, yeah, I really love that. I really like that. Um, what do I do now? Now, let's assume for a minute that you've got your license, you've got your FAC, got your ticket in the UK, uh, or you're in a position in America to be able to, to you know, to buy what it is you want to buy. Um, not necessarily what you want to buy, but something. Um, the choice is vast. There's there's a lot of stuff uh, that you can that you can you could be very very overwhelmed with choice. But for a lot of us, the issue is not so much around what to buy in terms of the choice, it's what they can buy with the budget that they have because not everybody has got the money to be able to buy super Gucci gear, brand new, out of the box, uh, recently imported or whatever. You know, there's things that they wanna buy and then there's things that they can buy. So here's just a few pointers and a few ideas that I have in terms of that and being able to access the shooting sports on a budget. And let's assume for the sake of argument, um, just for simplicity, that we're talking target shooting to begin with. So how can you get into target shooting really cheaply um, on a budget? Well, 
surprisingly easy actually. Uh, let's assume if you're in the UK you've been into air gunning maybe. It might surprise a lot of you to know that you can pick up a really really nice second hand bolt action rifle for far less than you can pick up a, 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 an average air rifle. That's that's the fact. You know you can pick up a really really decent uh, set of kit uh, in terms of a rifle, uh, a sling and a scope for not a lot of money. Now you might be thinking well, what's not a lot of money? Well it kind of depends where you go and how you buy but if you're buying privately then you can look through sites like Gun Trader, Gun Style, places like that and you can usually find guns like 1022s, Ruger 1022s, um, for less than less than three hundred pounds, often less than two hundred pounds. You know, it's not unusual to see a Ruger 1022 with a wooden stock. You know, an older Ruger 1022 for hundred and eighty quid. You know, you can pick them up dirt cheap, and I know you can in the states, even cheaper than that. So you can pick up a semi-automatic 2-2 rimfire uh, firearm and then stick a scope on it. If you're lucky, you might actually even get a scope there with it as part of the deal. It might not be a very good one, but then as long as it's adequate and it does its job on a 2-2 rimfire, how much do you really need? You know, this is a big point I'm going to come on to in a minute. What do you need to do what you want to do? So let's assume you can pick this rifle up and actually get yourself shooting effectively for a couple of hundred pounds. You know, that's entirely probable that you could do that, especially if you have a little look around. Now, what are the things that are against us doing this? OK, so there might be a possibly a sense of pride. You know, you might not want to feel like you're the person down the club who's got the, you know, the old gun and so on and so forth. But. Look around you in your club and look at what people are shooting because people shoot an all, awful lot of different stuff. And many, many people have got an old faithful gun that they rely on. You know, there's no shame whatsoever with shooting an older gun. There's no shame. As long as it's safe and as long as it does the job, absolutely fine. You know, and who the hell cares? You know, as long as you're shooting, that's the important thing. Now, just talking about a Ruger 1022 for a minute. Um, I'm a fan of Ruger 1022s just because they're very, very versatile. There's a lot you can do with them. And you can actually pick up an older Ruger 1022, maybe a Ruger that's, I don't know, 30 years old. And you can almost add to it as you go along. So you can change that rifle out. You can add bits. You can take bits away. You can put it in a new stock. You can get it re-barreled. You can get different size magazines for it. You can get different rails for it. You can get a, a swap out of trigger. You know, you can put a bipod on it. You can really customise that little gun to suit you. You can keep it in the wooden stock if you wish, or you can go out and you can get, you know, a stock that's made by somebody else that is uh, composite plastic, that is, uh, you know sort of any other sort of kind of material you can even turn the thing into a bullpup if you want i mean it's not necessarily the best thing to do i'm not a great fan but you know that, that just shows how versatile these these guns are so the 1022 is a great starter platform and you can really really swap it out and it ain't going to fail really you know as long as it's been well relatively well looked after they're a tried and tested design um so you can buy it as a base gun and then build it build upon it change it around swap it out and end up with something very 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 different from what you bought originally but to get you started perfectly fine another great gun are the cz's now the laser cz series are the 455 and the 457s now these are super super little guns they're bolt action rifles i own a 457 myself um and the versatility of the thing is brilliant they're super light they come in different configurations in terms of barrel length barrel thickness and weight uh, you can get uh, drop-in triggers for them uh, the the actual stock trigger you can get spring kits for them which will reduce that trigger pull down and give you a really nice smooth uh, trigger pull um, Again, there's all sorts of things that you can do with them. Not inherently as versatile as the 1022, but this is a bolt action rifle. It's a different animal. It's, it's you know it's used for different things a lot of the time. Now, 
the 1022 that I've got is a takedown model. It's a bit Gucci, but then that's fine. I've had more than my fair share of cheap 1022s. The CZ457, one of the things that I really love about it as a starter bolt action rifle is it does also give you the option of being able to change the barrels yourself at home. So you can actually get uh, a barrel, you buy a 22 long rifle, uh, CZ457, you can swap that barrel out and you can buy yourself a 22 long, uh, 22 mag, you can get yourself a 17 HMR or 17 and you can swap those barrels out in next to no time and you can be shooting that different calibre on the range, you know, within two minutes. Um, really easy to do. So that's a great way of shooting, it's a great way of using those rimfire calibres as well. Uh, you know, across the board. So that's worth thinking about. Now the CZ 455s and 457s, brand new, probably topping around about 450 quid, something like that maybe, maybe a bit more, obviously with a scope on top. But we're still not talking mega bucks. We're still not into thousands or even a thousand for that. Uh, you can get second hand ones for, again, a bit like the Ruger, 200, 200, 300 quid, um, you know, and then you can get the glass to go on top and that does not have to be anything special you know there's a lot of snobbery around glass now for a 2-2 rimfire rifle there's a lot of things that will more than suffice hawk optics you know back in the day when i was growing up so we were going back that nearly 40 years hawk optics were always seen as really cheap as chips they're still economically priced in the main but the quality has gone up massively the optics of hawk optics aren't aren't really what they used to be they are actually really, really you know really good for the price point that they're at and more than sufficient for two two rimfire rifles um particularly if you're just using it on the range plinking or whatever um so it's worth thinking about going for a cheaper optic you know people say oh you know you've got to spend three times what you spent on the gun on the glass on top well no you don't really you know these are these are just sound bites that people give you because somebody told them that you know get what works for you Get what works for you. Go second hand, you know, buy from within the club, buy from the internet, you know, on, on Gun Trader or another reputable platform. Y you know, just make sure that you're getting something that is safe and, you know, reliable in terms of um, who you're buying it from. They're the key things. So obviously it's a really great idea to get things checked over by a gunsmith if you can. Um, if you've got to take a punt on it, then at least know what you're looking for um, in terms of... Uh, you, you, the sort of red flags around around gun safety and also you know wear and tear in general but uh, we'll cover that in a different video that's beyond the scope of, of this video um, now going to the extreme affordability end of the market for those of you that are literally you know not not really have any sort of spare cash beyond a certain small amount you can even go down to the the sort of forerunners to the um 455 457 which are the uh, the bruno series brno uh, which are now you know somebody's going to prove me wrong here and that's absolutely fine because i'm not an expert on this but you know bruno are effectively the older the sort of daddies granddaddies of the of the cz's and there are absolutely thousands of these things out there if you go to any auction house like Holtz Auctioneers or Southams they have got absolutely loads of, of, um, of Brunos Bruno uh, 22s and those rifles I'm not joking go for 30 or 40 quid 30 40 50 pounds sometimes they are out there in multitudes there's loads and loads of them and Take a note of how many times you ever hear anybody say anything bad about a Bruno. I guarantee you will not run out of fingers in a hurry if you're counting them off. I've never heard a bad thing said about Brunos. I've got mates that shoot Brunos that have had them for 40 years and swear by them. And they're super accurate. They take rabbits, they take, you know, vermin, small game, varmints, and they're still absolutely perfect as guns. We're looking at 2-2 long rifle here, you know, we're looking at lead, lead heads. We're, we're not looking at rifle barrels that are going to wear out in a hurry. So a lot of these guns are still in excellent condition. And as long as they've been relatively well maintained and cleaned every now and again, you know, they're likely going to be really, really good buys. And for 30 or 40 pounds, maybe 50 pounds, this is going to be able to put those guns within the scope of the majority of people that are wanting to shoot on a very bare minimal budget. 
Now, you can shoot those with open sights if you wish, you know, go down the iron sight route, or you can, you know, go again for a cheap scope, slap a rail on it, get a cheap, cheap set of mounts and a cheap scope. The other thing that's worth mentioning in terms of um, accessories and the cheaper end of the accessory market is that for 2.2, a lot of airsoft stuff will work. Now, by stuff, I need to quantify what I mean there. I'm not talking about pressure bearing parts and I'm not talking about mechanical working parts necessarily. What I'm really talking about is more your add-ons your tripods, your bipods, sorry, you you know, you, your things like that, um, your rails, bits and bobs. You've got to remember that tutus aren't under a lot of punishment, especially if you're rain shooting. You know, a lot of the time, the cheap and cheerful stuff will do the job. It doesn't have to be Gucci. You know, you can mag pull the arse off your, your tutu long rifle if you want to. It's, it's likely not going to make it shoot much better. And for the for the type of gun that it is, you know, it's not under a tremendous amount of strain. So you can actually get away with using the cheaper end of the accessory market on a lot of rifles. Now, some people will kick off and say, I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. You know, a lot of this is snobbery. You can get by with it. I know some really experienced shooters, incredibly accurate and, 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 and confident and well-versed shooters that you know, swear by just buying what they need to get the job done. They don't want to spend a lot of money. They're practical They're practical about it. And it doesn't have to have a label on the side. It doesn't have to have a massive price tag. It just gets the job done. So you can actually end up shooting on a real limited budget if you want to. Okay, don't be put off by, you know, people who turn up at the range with all of the, the gear. You know, often it's the people that have got... Um, all the gear and no idea, you know, we've all heard that before. And that can be the case with everything from golf to motorbike racing to any any other hobby pastime. You know, just because you've got the gear doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to be a good shot, an accurate shot. Um, in fact, one of the best shots in my club, if not the best shot, is um, a guy who shoots an older Bruno, um, wooden stocked rifle. Um, perfectly adequate and this guy is an absolute wizard and he shoots that rifle incredibly well he's working with a tool he's got and there's absolutely no chance that anybody it doesn't really matter what gear you've got you're not going to get close to him because his skill level is phenomenal now that that is testimony to what you know a, a, a relatively standard rifle can do like i said that's one of those brunos that you can pick up for 50 50 quid uh, if you're lucky, uh, and yeah, and this is a guy who's got more trophies on the wall than you know I probably ever imagined. So you know, if it's good enough for him and he can get the job done, really, so can you. Um, I really hope that you found this interesting. I invite some comments if you can um, be bothered because I think it's really important that we kind of come together. The reason that I've done this video really is to provide that little aspect around around sort of starter shooters who maybe haven't got a lot of cash and I hope for them it's been useful and it's really enabled you to sort of think actually I can get shooting on a reasonable budget um, you know and that's and that's the name of the game it's all about getting more people into the sports it's all about perpetuating the sports keeping it popular uh, and ultimately keeping it alive and relevant in our society as much as we can for as long as we can. Working together, let's get the job done. So if you want to make any comments, please do like and subscribe, and I will see you very soon. I promise I'm not going to leave it as long next time. Cheers now.